Me and your father grew up together. Went to school together. After high school, I went and joined the army. <laughs> and Earl, he uh, chose a more free-spirited lifestyle. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's an understatement. <laughs> Truth be told, your father was a bad man on that guitar. They traveled around doing some gigs. After my time in the service, I came back home and bought this place. I remember hearing about Earl showing up to his shows drunk and sometimes blowing them off altogether. <laughs> For too long after hearing that, he come walking through that door. <laughs> he was looking for work. So I let him play here twice a week. Man, there was people in here wall to wall. Earl and the band were a real hit for a while. It seemed like he was really starting to get things back on track. He just couldn't put that bottle down. Maybe that's why I like to drink so much. <laughs> yeah, well, one night, he was hitting the bottle real hard, and his set was tanking. A couple of customers started heckling him. He got the yapping right back, as he always did. And everything went south from there. Ended up getting his ass kicked in the alley back there. He come back in here, half standing, blaming me for not helping. <laughs> All the while telling me to pour him a drink. I said, you are done for the night. <laughs> Go home, sleep it off, you know? He said to me, you couldn't hack it in the army and you can't hack it as a bartender. He went and passed out in the corner over there. Man, I thought I had some bad nights. Right? If it was anybody else but him, I'd have taken him back out there in that alley and finished it. But I knew he was dealing with something way bigger than the nonsense he was spouting out at me. So I called Sharon down here to take him to get checked out. I ain't seen or heard from a stone ever since. 